Uh, okay, so... Wait, I didn't even say happy birthday to you yet. Oh. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> You're right, Bash. <laughs> Bash about to get banned from her own channel. <laughs> hey, if you guys don't say happy birthday, you're banned from the channel. And then she just forgets. <laughs> All right, so time to... We'll get a little more serious now. So, uh, today we're gonna create a lua plugin from scratch so from nothing uh, i have an idea already of the plugin that we can make since that part uh everyone has to come up with on their own i can't help them with that part but i figured it would be pretty fun and bash i um when we were chatting about it you know we were just talking about how hopefully we can uh, basically just like stop along the way at all the different points because it's one of those things where like i've literally i wrote my first lua plugin in probably like 2016 for any of him so so it's like i just have forgotten that people are like what do you mean you need to put it in this folder like that's not a thing that i <laughs> like remember uh, so yeah. so bash is gonna stop me every step oh weird flex yeah thanks <laughs> um bash is gonna stop me along the way chat feel free to ask questions of course too and we'll just see kind of how far we can get on writing uh somewhat straightforward like in concept plugin and we'll try and do some stuff like um i can try and show how we like test a plugin how do we like get vim help docs like all those kind of weird things that are very much like neo vim specific that are hard to find on the internet we can try and try and do that today any other comments bash um no cool all right, that's, this time. A, that's great. Okay, um, what, what is a plugin? That's a great question. So we'll we'll start off with explaining what even are plugins because it, it is actually kind of interesting. When um, people, I think, you'll see like coming up shortly that if you understand the basics of like configuring NeoVim for yourself, you're like most of the way to making a plugin already. So like Vash, just like how we did the stuff for configuring telescope or whatever, like writing functions to manage your LSP config. If you can do those, that's like 90% of the way towards writing like a simple uh, Lua plugin for NeoVim, which is cool. So like, yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh right. no, that was my, that was my mic squeaking. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I guess I'm um, catching up to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's totally fine. So, so basically one of the cool things that I like a lot about sort of the way that NeoVim does this, right. Is that basically like configuration and scripting and like a bunch of, bunch of other, um, like all of those things are all sort of the same concept. So if you can write code for your config you can write code for a plugin which is cool i think it's uh really nice so as you get better at each of those then it's good so yeah, i think my audio is messed up okay keep talking I'm okay you're good do you want to switch maybe it's just which um mic you have or something i don't know yeah that's what i need to do okay that's fine all right well while bash is doing that we'll do the really boring boring stuff parts first i just figured we show everything so literally the easiest way to start making a plugin make a new repo on github or equivalent you know you can use gitlab or anything you like this one's going to be called stack um stack map.envim because it's kind of like a stack of maps do you want, we'll do no honor uh, just stack maps stacks of maps um you can add a read me you can add a git ignore lua is fine doesn't really matter choose a license i usually go with mit because i'm not worried about people stealing my stuff that's fine <laughs> bash was your mic just not plugged in it was just not plugged in oh my goodness you sound so much better now <laughs> he was using my webcam mic <laughs> oh. bash i'm bringing the stuff stream onto yours all right I'm expanding the scuff stream. That's literally like, hey, TJ, um, why is Bash sound so bad? Like, can you just fix your Discord? It's probably your audio. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay. So that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Uh, okay. So we've uh, we've created a repository. That's uh, that's good. That's pretty easy. That's the first step. And so then now what you can do, uh, there's a couple pretty interesting things depending on your plugin manager. Uh, I like to have, uh, I just have a folder on my machine for all my plugins that I am actively developing. Surprise, there's a lot of them. You could just put this anywhere though on your computer, right? So you can just clone uh, the repo that you just made, right? So you've got some Git repo here. And now we've got uh, basically just a blank slate of a repo, okay? So the, uh, 
if you start writing code in here, it will not yet be accessible to NeoVim because you don't <laughs> like NeoVim doesn't know what this thing is, right? It doesn't know how to connect this. So most uh, plugin managers, you use a uh, plug, but this, this should work basically similar for anybody else as well, is you can just specify like a path on your file system to load this plugin. So that's like the first thing you need to do so that NeoVim can sort of figure out uh, that you want to run code from this place. Does that make sense? Yeah. So sorry, which, what file is that? that you're this writing? is, this is my, like, this is basically like my init.lua of plugins for Packer. So I've got okay. Packer, which uses like this use thing. And I should be able to do something just like home TJ DeVries plugins. Um, we just call this stack map.envim. Okay. So if I do this, this basically so just says import it like a normal plugin and, yep. but just use your like relative path or yep. like your, sorry, not your relative path. You're like full file path to your local. Yeah. So for you, it'd be like plug home bash plugins, you know, stack map. Now, if you're okay. just sort of consuming this plugin as a user, then you wouldn't do this. Obviously you just let your plugin manager manage it just like normal. Right. But one of the sort of interesting things about the way the NeoVim like plugin landscape is right now is it's basically just git repos right so it's like okay well i i have a git repo i just need to tell my plugin manager where is that git repo does that make mm -hmm. sense yeah cool yeah so if i do this and i do um packer sync to just basically install my stuff you would do like plug install or plug update or something like that now we've now we've got it installed okay so that's that's what's going on there so there's now that this is installed, we would be able to find code in this place. OK, so if you remember from how we set up stuff in our in like your init.vim and sort of your config and vim, right, we just put mm -hmm. something in a Lua file and then we can basically require that Lua file from somewhere else. Right. So or we put it in a Lua folder. So let's just make a folder Lua every um place in the vim runtime and when i say vim runtime do you know what i mean when i'm saying vim runtime bash um yeah so would it, it, it would it be like that would that be the runtime yeah so the runtime is basically just like a list of a bunch of different folders that neovim considers like um sort of like base folders and then in those base folders it looks for different important folders for example it will look for Lua, a folder named Lua there, and it will add those Lua folders to sort of like the the Lua environment. Oh. Yep. So, and then also, um, I don't remember if we did this in your config, but if we did something like make dir plugin, so plugin's an important folder, and we'll come back to that in a second. We configure something in here, and I'll just call this one example. It doesn't really matter. And this just says print um, hello bash. If I open up NeoVim again, we'll see that that actually prints. So there's a couple important folders for your, both for your plugin and for your regular config. They work exactly the same. So if you have a folder in your NeoVim config called plugin and you put Lua files inside there, they will be automatically executed on startup. Okay. okay. Um, I think this is probably defined somewhere in help plugin maybe right plugin i'm not sure of the exact help file oh, of course that's embarrassing i'm sorry i didn't know the exact help reference for once off the top of my head shame wow. is it even the real teach <sighs> yeah i think we should prop let's just pack it up <laughs> yeah i'm getting old now i'm forgetting An things <laughs> um <laughs> so so basically though if you put something uh in plug in plugin for your init or you put it here they'll just automatically get executed which is important if you have some things in your plugin that need to get set up at the very beginning of neovim startup time right so neovim goes through and basically before you get to um you know you run neovim press enter stuff happens and then eventually you get to this like welcome screen all the mm -hmm. stuff in plugin gets executed before we get to this plugin screen does that make sense you following me no okay so Wait. all all the stuff so, in any yeah go ahead ask your question so basically in this okay so basically in a given like 
we've created a Git a Git repo. Yep. Um, that's obviously our, like our, our plugin name. Yep. And then in that in that repo, we need to have a folder that's called plugin. Yep. And that's going to contain Lua files. Yep. And those Lua files are going to be like executed at runtime. Yep. Before you even call like anything to do with the plugin. Yes. So that you can call things to do with the plugin. Exactly right. So if okay. you wanted to do something like set up default mappings, for example, we probably won't have any mappings really in this plugin, even, but it's going to use mappings. Like you could do that inside of these plugin files and they will automatically get set up. Or if you needed to create commands or whatever, they can get automatically done at the beginning of NeoVim's uh, like execution, right? So I'll give, I'll give an example. It's like if we did something like vim.keymap uh, dot set right just like how we were doing inside of your lsp config right so we could do like normal asdf and this could say something like echo hello like this right yeah if i put this here this is inside of my plugin example file and i just mm -hmm. open up neovim again i can say nmap asdf to show what's going on and look that that mapping that we made is already there so the plugin file mm -hmm. gets executed before we sort of like make it to this and by the time we are inside of neovim mm -hmm. then we've already been we've already executed those plugin files gotcha okay cool. that makes sense that makes sense this is otherwise like how would you be able to call any of the functions or anything yep. like that in the lua file yep. so that's the that's the first folder that's important for making plugins the second folder is if we have a folder called lua right and so last time when we were doing like telescope stuff we or like osp things we made a lua slash bash bunny dot lua file right mm -hmm. in that file to actually execute it you needed to say require bash bunny remember how yeah. we so so code that gets put into the lua folder does not get automatically executed but it is available to the user okay so if we go lua stack map dot lua right so we're going to make some new file called stack map and mm -hmm. let's say print okay we loaded stack map now right so this if we open up a new um if we open up a new neovim here right and we just go here we're not going to see hello stack map loaded right mm -hmm. uh, even though we have this in our file but if we did something like lua require stack map now we're going to see that message Okay, so that only gets loaded when someone requires that file. Nice. Requires kind okay. of like import in other languages or like uh, loading up a package or anything like that, right? So that, that happens when you call the function require, not uh, ahead of time. Right, so with that, would that mean that like basically anything where it's kind of like a more optional functionality where you might not want to load it up right away because it might slow down, make the plugin very slow. You mm -hmm. want to put it in like the Lua folder instead of the plugin folder. Yeah, exactly. And just um, if your plugin, like our plugin probably won't really have very many things, maybe even nothing that needs to get loaded um, at the very beginning. We'll probably do one thing, which is like make a command to sort of like debug our plugin so people can print debug information. We can make that command in our plugin section, but we don't need to do anything else automatically. We can wait until the user requires stack map before we need to execute any code. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that cool. makes sense. Um, how familiar are you with um, sort of how Lua modules are structured? Not familiar. Wonderful. I've never worked with Lua. Cool. That's awesome. So Lua basically um, works with uh, requiring other files by typing require, and then you give it some path. So we did stack map, right? And what this actually does is it searches a bunch of basically folders on your computer, right? And it looks for mm -hmm. some file file that either matches stackmap.lua, right? So it just needs to have basically this exact name here. So stackmap.lua mm -hmm. match stackmap.lua. Or alternatively, if we did something like this, let's um, inside of our Lua for folder, let's make a folder called stackmap. Okay, and if we move uh, stackmap.lua into here and we call it init.lua, init.lua are special, are special mm -hmm. function, or is a special like file type, similar to how like Python has underscore underscore init. I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen that yeah. or um, trying to think of another 
So Python's one is actually like super, super similar, right? So if we yeah. move that same file into here, you'll notice that we no longer have our stack map.lua. We have lua, stack map, and init.lua, right? So then when we go to require stack map, it'll call init. Exactly. So now if we quit out of this other NeoVim and we start it again and we type require stack map, see, it's still called that, that function, right? But it didn't. It didn't do that. So those are sort of the two places that require is going to look. Mm -hmm. But require also understands sort of this concept of like nested directories. Okay. Um, so if we did something like Lua stack map um, helper dot Lua or something, or let's call it like Lua stack map util dot Lua, because it's classic to have a util function, right? And we say, oh, this is the utils uh, file, right? Something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So now, if we do Lua require stack map, and then you put a dot to basic that when you put dot, that's basically like saying, look inside of a folder called this, and I call this util. Now it'll say this is the utils file. Okay. So you okay. can nest sort of like namespace them, right? By putting them in folders deeper with each other. And every time you want to go deeper into the folders, you just put a dot basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will allow you to do that. Okay. Okay. An important thing for you to know though. So notice how the first time we called require, it printed something for that, right? Now watch what happens the second time that we require it. It didn't print. Why might it have not printed? <laughs> well, because we, I guess we already called it. It already executed. It's already loaded. Exactly right. So require is in general, and we have some ways to get around this that I'll show on this stream so that you don't always have to restart NeoVim every time you want to like re-execute a file. But require mm -hmm. loads a file once, and then basically it puts it inside of this table. Um, not super important for you to understand exactly the details of the implementation of that, but suffice to say, basically just looks up in a table to say, hey, do we have any like anything that's ever been required with this string before oh we do well here you go so actually lua files you can basically think of a lua file actually looking something more like um oh and for some reason i cut off the top of my screen let me try this one second sorry there we go Scott. um uh <laughs> basically you can think of a lua file as something like it it's one big function right that gets called like this okay and so whatever this function returns that's what gets stored in that sort of global package table okay that keeps track of what's been done so what we can do is we can actually say instead of um this is like a comment so it's not actually doing it's not actually exactly like it was very similar if we did something like return five okay for some reason this this thing returns five now if we quit out of here and we Lua print uh, require stack map dot util, it's going to print. This is the utils file because it went through and executed this, right? So it's mm -hmm. executing top to bottom of the file because this is a scripting language, right? It executes this, then it gets to mm -hmm. return five. And so it returned five and we printed that from our call. If yeah. we run that same line of code again, it didn't print this part, right? It only printed what the return value was because that's what the module basically like is holding. Does that make gotcha. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So is, is it almost basically it's like when you require, it's like it's running it for the first time and yep. then it kind of caches the return. Exactly right. Yes, exactly right. Okay. And so that, um, that behavior we can use to basically make, um, but, but it's basically like, it's really important that you understand that because if you keep on sort of just calling like require util and instead we change this to seven, right? So I've changed it from five to seven. On first sort of like pass, when you're first doing this, what you think would happen now is this would print seven, right? Because what you're thinking passed, in your head. So it's probably exactly five. right. Right. So it's yeah. going to be five. Bash. Everyone give Bash a clap in the chat right now because she got that one, got it right first try. <laughs> actual first try so <laughs> the important thing to remember is that require the semantics of require right is that what it does is it loads a file once and saves the result of that thing this is 
uh actually not that weird it's like exactly what you would have happen in like python or something like that because it doesn't re-execute the file every time you're importing it right that would be crazy and it would be really expensive mm -hmm. you don't want to yeah. do that you only want to parse and execute those things once and then you want to use the results of those things from then on so that's that's the first thing um well while we're talking about it i'll just show you it's possible to basically override this and say actually please really load this thing for me again <laughs> okay and the way you can do that is uh, I'll show you package.loaded this is a global package here uh, oh I'm sorry this p just means uh, print a table out we can go over some of that shortly I'll come back to this but this basically just means print a table package.loaded is one big table and you'll see that I've got a bunch of different things already inside of here because mm -hmm. these are all the different packages NeoVim has already loaded, right? And so we can just like keep scrolling. There's tons of stuff inside of here. But if we did package.loaded, um, what do we call it? Stack map dot util, we'll see that it is five. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? So the way that you could remove a key in Lua is you set a table like this. So package.loaded is a table, right? We're basically getting... Uh, this key if we say equals nil that's sort of like the none value if we say this now this deletes that key from the table okay so if Got we it. print stack map the util now it's gonna say nil so it's say hey that tape that thing doesn't exist in this table um and one thing that's maybe different than some other languages as well is lua by default if the a key does not exist in the table it just returns nil it's not an error to ask for a key that doesn't exist okay so, gotcha. um, so when it, it will return nil for any anything. So if we did stack map util ASDF, ASDF it's still going to say no. It's not an error like, oh, that was in the table. And you said it's, there's no distinction uh, between like was in the table and not or anymore. Things like that, right? So now, though, Bash, what do you think is going to happen when we do um, require stack map dot util? What's the new value going to be? Uh, seven. Yeah, exactly right. Because it's just mm. it's going to print the thing because it's re-executing this file and then it's mm -hmm. going to say seven. And then now every time going forward, it's just going to say seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does that, does that make sense? This is, this is an important thing to, to get a strong grasp on because what it lets you do is you can keep iterating within the same NeoVim session. You don't need to like always quit NeoVim, load everything up, get started. You just want to say like, Oh, re-require that thing. And let's, let's do that again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And cool. then just to like, I guess, clarify it mm -hmm. or yeah. for anyone who's like maybe unsure. Um, so that when you're doing like the yeah, Lua for a friend, capital right? yeah. package stuff. <laughs> Wait, what? You're, asking for, you're asking for a friend, not for you, but for a friend. Yeah, yeah. asking for a friend. <laughs> um, so just to confirm. So when we do uh, like Lua uh, capital P package dot loaded, where it's showing all of the cached values, yep. all of those values are basically getting assigned the first time that like in our init dot vim or like init dot Lua because it would probably in lua as well yep. um but basically it's like when we've done require yep and then a plugin yep it's basically it's grabbing all of the information like all of the what returns from each of those files mm -hmm. yep. and caching that with its given key basically like the file name yep uh in the package.loaded table yeah exactly and right um individual like plugins will of course require things and the require is shared for everybody okay so like right, you know when right. when you call require telescope in your config and then some other plugin also calls require telescope they share the same package dot loaded like global table yeah. uh and so it's so, not running it twice it's right. just running it the one time and then it's got the cache information exactly. and then it uses that okay and this is that super important sense. because um let's say you did something like you added um a key to like a, a table or you basically said like hey telescope i want you to like know this additional feature or i added an entry to a table or whatever you want mm -hmm. all of the plugins to share that state right because like mm -hmm. if one plugin says oh add you know dot go means it's a go file and dot pi means a pi file and the other file uh, another plugin asks hey what file type is this well, you want it to like take into account the fact that the other plugin somewhere added like pi and go, right? Does that make sense? Like you don't want them to be separate from each other, which would happen if you were re-executing the file every time. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So that's the that's the that's the that this like principle here is not specific to NeoVim. This is just general like Lua information. This this behavior would be exactly the same if you were running like Lua inside of Love 2D or some other like Lua game engine or whatever. This is exactly how the Lua behaves generally. This isn't like NeoVim specific uh, info up to this point. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So. This is where um, now we can start trying to do some NeoVim things. Oh, hey, thanks for the birthday wishes, Judo, by the way. <laughs> um, let's, um, I'm going to show you this pattern is a really common pattern that you'll see in a lot of different plugins and doesn't super make sense uh, until you understand the stuff that we've just done. So a lot of times what you'll see is people write local M is something. You have a bunch of, uh, you have local M is a table. And you can add stuff to this, like example um, is like a function, right? And maybe it just prints high. Pretty dumb, fun pretty dumb example, but that's what it does. And then you return M. This M, <clears throat> this M is, uh, stands for module. So like the way that I like to think about this is I'm creating some new module. This module is the stack Mac module um, and it's inside of this function. So now if we... Uh, quit out of these and we do Lua requ uh, P uh, require stack map. You'll see that mm -hmm. now we return a table It has one key and the key is example and it's a function. Cool. Okay. okay. So yeah. this is how you get something like when people say require um, telescope dot setup and then pass some things inside of here. Mm -hmm. Right. What happens now is we would do something like m.setup is function. Maybe it takes in some options and then it's going to do something with these options like this, right? And we can just delete mm -hmm. example. So now we can quit out of quit out of here again, open it up, require stack map, and you'll see we have a setup function. So this is sort of a classic way. This is a classic way that uh, we set up plugins in NeoVim and it's just a convention. Setup isn't a magical function or anything like that. It's just a convention that a lot of people have settled on um, because it works nicely and and doesn't uh, and basically like delays startup until someone actually wants to start it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So let me pitch you the idea of this plugin. And then we'll just work on implementing it. And then we'll do all the cool little other uh, other features. Okay? Okay. That sounds good. So the this plugin idea came from stream like a, <clears throat> a week and a half ago or something like that. And it was basically like, wouldn't it be cool if you could do something like um, on a certain event, I want to make a bunch of key maps. Basically like make kind of like my own little custom mode. Maybe like... I, uh, we were doing it for debugging. So like when I entered the Ooh. debugger, I would like add a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that yeah. would just load up for this situation. And then when the debugger thing is done, then we delete all of those. The problem is, of course, if you delete those, you may not map the key map back to what it was originally. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like a temporary state. For right. Your key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So what we wanted to do was basically be like, hey, we are programmers. We know what stacks are. What if we just mm -hmm. imagine basically like pushing something onto a stack, a bunch of basically pushing a bunch of key max onto a stack. We save mm -hmm. off all the original ones. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when we call unmap this later, we reapply all the original mappings if available right so obviously like if you mm -hmm. didn't have anything mapped to a certain keybind then we would just leave it yeah yeah that sounds cool cool uh yeah and it also lets us just say stacks on stacks on stacks as many times as we need to which is also good <laughs> yes as mentioned. also good also yes. good also an important part of uh of making a plugin is uh finding memes to motivate you so yes uh yeah cool so basically what we need is we're going to need two major functions we're going to need something like m dot push right and that's just going to be some function that takes what i was thinking is probably like a name and mappings and then we'll have m dot pop right and it, it just has a name mm -hmm. okay so these are kind of the two 
functions that I'm thinking of what we're going to basically provide as like a public API. Okay, and what you would do as a user would somewhere you would call something like, um, and I'll just put this inside of some comments of like Lua require uh, map stack dot push. And then you'd say like debug mode, right? And then sometime later, you'd say Lua require map stack, oops, map stack dot pop uh, debug mode. Oh, and I forgot to put, um, like this would have some mappings inside here, right? There'd be something inside of here. So we have to decide a couple of things like, oh, hey, how do we um, define what mappings look like? How do we make this work, etc. But that's basically the general principle of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Is it, this is all good? Yeah. Cool. So let's think about how would you make a key map in Lua, Bash? Uh, I would use the, I think it's, uh, it's like vim dot, I, I have to look at yeah. my, I have to look no, at that's my perfect. Thing. Wait. <laughs> no, no, you're it's good. It's like basically, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll look at my config. There you go. Vim.keymap.set, right? So we've got yeah, um, something like that. <laughs> we've got this vim.keymap.set, which yeah. allows us to set a key map. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So this is this is one part of the puzzle. So we'll need to know how to use this function. So let's say functions we need. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit slower, uh, just so that we make sure that we're um, grabbing all the pieces. So stop me if any of these parts don't make sense. So we're gonna want to use vim.keymap.set. This mm -hmm. is going to allow us to create new key maps how to get key maps you might ask that would be a good question to ask right so mm -hmm. if if i didn't know what the name was i would use telescope help tags again so this is a really nice way if you've got telescope if you've got telescope chat this is a really <laughs> nice way to do this and you could just type get key map and oh my goodness there's some functions to get the key maps Amazing. Ama amazing. Is this my is this my intro to my last Take Tuesday video all amazing. over again? <laughs> amazing. Um <laughs> So, uh and this is so this is just in the help help tags, right? So you can say get key map. This just gets a list of global, so that means non-buffer local mapping definitions. Okay? So what, when I'm reading what I think this, I'm like, oh, dang, that means I also probably need to keep track of buffer key maps. But I don't know if we're going to be able to get far enough to handle buffer key maps or not. So for right now, let's just stick with global key maps. Okay? Okay. So we also want nvim get key map. Now, the problem is if you just call something like Lua nvim get key map and you pass in n for normal mode, this is an error. The reason that this is an error is because these functions are not in the global namespace for NeoVim in Lua. They're basically hidden, not really hidden, super obvious ones you know, vim.api. So there's a vim global. Oh, wow. Print vim. It's some table. Okay. So there's a table, vim, and it has a bunch of really useful features. It's kind of like the standard library for making NeoVim Lua plugins. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's also vim.api, and you'll see, oh, hey, look, all of these nvim underscore functions, some of them that may look familiar to us. There's a lot mm -hmm. of them because we give you a lot of things to work on the uh, on NeoVim from within it, of course, right? So mm -hmm. anytime you see some function that starts with nvim underscore, anytime that you see nvim underscore, the way that you access that inside of Lua is vim.api dot the name of that thing. So vim.api dot nvim get key map is the function that we need to use. So if I do vim.api dot nvim get key map and I pass n for normal mode, we'll see, oh, I didn't call uh, print. We'll say, hey, oh, hey, there's a table there. Very cool. That now, is very cool. Bash, you might be asking, TJ, when you just did that here, it just printed this table thing, and that's not very helpful because I don't know what's inside the table, right? That's How did true. you do yes. that? How did you do that fancy <laughs> trick from before? Well, Bash, excellent question. Thank you. No problem. I've got a few <laughs> globals that I um, made for myself, 
and some of these will be apparent uh, later why we use them. But this capital P one is, in my mind, mm. an invaluable key map. You cannot overstate how nice having this key map is for um, inside of your own config when you're writing plugins and trying to figure out what is going on. So by default, um. Lua prints tables, and it just tells you that it is a table, and then it gives you the reference to that table. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. That is, it is useful because you can tell if two tables are the same, right? So if I print, or if it is exactly the same table as in by reference, right? Not the same contents. It tells you if it's the same table by reference. So if I just mm -hmm. print two random tables, this kind of looks like a dude's, he's like looking at you. Like, <laughs> never noticed that before. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you'll notice that these two numbers are not the same, right? So it's not as if it's a hash of the table or anything like that. It represents kind of like its memory address, right? So it's like, yeah. this is sort of like the pointer to this table. What yeah. you want is NeoVim. So once again, we have this global Vim. It ships within mm -hmm. a lot of nice libraries. We have Vim.inspect and you could do a table like this and say like key equals value. Oh, I don't actually, oh yes, I do. Uh, and Vim.inspect returns sort of like a string representation of a table. So like if I what do- what we were seeing for package.loaded, that was your- Exactly, yep. Yeah. So when I was doing it before, if you just type print, package.loaded it'll just tell you hello this is a table it exists at right not not as helpful right so that's why i have this i have this shorthand capital p that i define in my config and i recommend yeah. other plugin author authors to do the same so that as you're uh writing code it uh, it is easy for you to remember this basically mm -hmm. will print whatever the value is and then uh, it also returns it as a nice side effect so you could um you could call it sort of inside, but that, that part doesn't super matter. The main big part is that it does this print vim.inspect. So this makes it so that when I just type P and I type key equals value, mm -hmm. it's going to print that table for me in a way that's easy to read. Um, nice. So that's important for people to have in their own thing. So you can inspect what the results of things look like. So for example, if we just print vim.api, the get key map one, it's just going to tell you that it's a table that is not super helpful when you're wondering what kind of does like the shape of this table look like what does that what does yeah. that do right so now we can print this and we'll see that okay it's a list of a bunch of tables each table contains information about a mapping so it has its left hand side it has what mode it's in and then it has its right hand side those are some of the main features that we're going to need to know to basically remap this thing later, right? So we kind of need yeah. we kind of need to know all of this information to sort of restore a mapping. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so so with those two pieces, we can basically start wiring up the very sort of like simple first uh, first pass uh, iteration of this. Okay. So I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 just uh, let's just try and let's just see where we get. So the first thing okay. we need to do is we need to decide what this function should look like. Like, what should people pass in to this mappings table? What would you like to pass in uh, to define new mappings, Bash? So like, let's just we can we can make it whatever way we think will be like most useful for users, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we can pick whatever we want and we can do the work to eventually call vim.keymap.set. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, like what format would you like to pass things in, um, as a table to define like a, a list of mappings? Like, I guess I would want to, I would want to put the actual mapping. So like, yep. for example, like leader. Yeah. Something. Right. And so maybe we do something like uh leader, uh, S or something. I don't know. Yeah. Do I have that map to something? Cause that would be a good example then. Uh, let's do leader ST. Cause I have that map to something already. Okay, okay, sure. Yep. And then what do you want to put as like the value for this? Uh, so I guess that would be the like what you'd actually want it to do. Yeah. Okay, right? sweet. So yeah, so this could just be something like uh, we can just do our classic um, echo hello. Yeah. Right. Because that's easy to see if that's working or not. Right. Um, 
Oh, the only thing that I forgot is we should probably also say the mode that we're doing these in. So let's just say that we're going to map these in normal mode like this, right? So this would yeah, be really yeah. cool. We could, you know, you could add other ones like uh, what I don't have anything mapped to like leader S Z. So we could do this, right? So we kind of want to get this situation working, mm -hmm. right? This would be like a really good start of, of where we can get. <clears throat> so let's... Uh, Let's try and do that. So let's say we get uh, mode and we get mappings here like this, right? So name, mode, and mappings. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get the key maps, right? So that we can save those off. So how are we going to get the key maps? Uh, just get it from what they, you mean like what they yeah. input? Yeah, exactly. Right. So we can, Yeah. yep. So we can just do this and we can use mode, right? And so what I like to do is um, I will, I'll just basically get to here and then I'll just start like each step along the way. I like to start iterating um, and seeing how far I'm getting uh, because Lua is a really nice like in interpreted scripting language. I can just keep on writing <laughs> like writing code and executing it and see if it's working. Like I kind of use NeoVim as its own REPL. So what I like to do is I like to do something like I just actually call this function and let's call, like let's say debug mode and and I actually just copy this here like this and let's just see if I can get this like how far we can go just by running and executing this file. Okay. So okay. I have a key map that just executes this file top to bottom. Um, it's for me, it's leader leader X because that's like a special one that I use a lot. So leader leader mm -hmm. X, um, which basically all it does is it writes the file and then it runs source percent. So source is a way to say, hey, Neovim, can you run the file that I'm currently in? Mm -hmm. uh, or can you run a file and percent represents the file that I'm currently in, right? So I could literally pass instead like home tj devries plugins uh stack maps lua stack maps init.lua i could literally type this and it will run that or i can just do source percent and it'll do the same thing does that make sense yeah cool yeah. so so now we've run this and was like okay cool well we got the maps that we were thinking we were going to be getting before <laughs> right like there's no there's no surprise there um, what we want to do now, right, is we want to find out if there are any, um, things in this mappings table, right, that, uh, exist inside of this, <clears throat> inside of these mappings, right? So inside of the maps that are currently mapped, we're looking for any of the existing ones. So we should hopefully find like leader ST, but we hopefully won't find leader SZ, right does, mm -hmm. does that make sense so let's just yeah. write ourselves a little function that says like local find mapping and maybe it's a function that takes um the maps table right so it's got all the mappings and then it's looking for something with this left hand side okay so we just want to find something that can do that and then let's um let's just see if we can call uh find mapping maps and let's just pass in directly um leader st like this okay right so we're just going to ignore the fact that we pass these in with a table right as i'm working through my plugin i really like to just like run this one step at a time uh, and mm -hmm. see see where we can get so maybe i'll say like print this and for right now it's going to return nothing because this function does nothing so when i execute this file it's going to say nil huh. surprise uh nothing yeah. <laughs> right or if i said return bash right and i save and i execute this file again it's going to say bash cool okay nice yeah so now what we need to do is we need to find some way to basically look over this mapping table and find out if any of them have this left hand side um do you know how to iterate over tables in lua bash no <laughs> very cool i i figured that was the case um so in most languages right you just do something like this 4x in maps you know and this Lua has do and end, right? You could say print X. Okay. If we okay. do that, or maybe you'd have like um, key value or something like that, right? And you'd print key and value. If we do that, it's going to say 
attempt to call a table value, which is a confusing error message given the situation, <laughs> right? Because you'd yeah. be like, I don't feel like I did call any table values. I don't know what that means. So yeah. Lua's for statement actually requires, um, <clears throat> they're underneath the hood a little bit more. It's basically just like, uh, it's going to call something that is like a function here that returns whatever you're putting here. So it's kind of like a syntactic sugar for doing something like while true do end next equals uh, next or like get next map or something like this, right? If next okay. equals nil, then break and and then do whatever's inside of here. Okay, so that's kind of like what the for loop maps to roughly roughly speaking okay <clears throat> but it's so what we need to do is we actually need to instead of having maps here which is not a function right maps is just a table we need to call pairs now there's two main iterators inside of lua and i'll write out these out there's pairs and there's i pairs pairs iterates over iterates uh over every key in a table not uh order not guaranteed Okay, so you want to do this when a table has like string keys and things like that, which is what our table has, right? Because it's got these two keys that are strings. If you wanted to iterate over something like it was an array, that's where you use I pairs. So this um, iterates over only numeric keys in a table. Order is guaranteed. Okay, so this will go one, two, three, four, etc. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so we don't have anything that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? We have strings over here. So we want to use pairs. Okay. Got it? Yeah. So now if we do this and we run this, it's going to print off um, a lot of things because I have a lot of mappings, right? <laughs> so it's got yeah. a bunch of mappings in this table and it can print all these. Um, oh, except in this oh, case, I forgot. Uh uh, well, no, there is no zero, Oscar. Nice try. Uh, I forgot which maps we were going over. We were iterating over the maps returned by vim.keymap, which is an array. Okay. okay. That is an array. So we actually want to use um, I pairs. Yep. And we can just basically um, ignore the first value. So it returns index value, but we don't need the index. We don't really care about what the what what spot in the array it is right we only care about what the actual value is yeah so if sense. we um if we do this now we'll see okay we've got a bunch of tables that's not super helpful so let's just mm -hmm. like do something where we print only the first table in the map and it's like oh cool here's the table we would like to find out right if um a left hand side if if this left-hand side is in this table, when you're looking at this table, what key might you compare <laughs> to see if these two things map? It's almost like they match. Yeah, so I yeah. It's, it's cheating because <laughs> I uh, accidentally uh, name everything the exact name that is called inside of NeoVim, which is probably cheating for your first L Lua <laughs> plugin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, uh, hey, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, what's up, Brian? Here you go, friend. Well, no, I'll feed myself. Oh, ow. So what we want to do now would be something like, let's do if um, value dot left hand side equals left hand side, right? Mm -hmm. Then return value. Otherwise, we're just going to keep going. Right? This is basically like a filter, like find first or something like that, right? Yeah. So now, hopefully, when we run this, um, oh, right. Oh, this is so good. This is actually a perfect example. I was thinking this might happen. So um, as we're running this, it doesn't match for some reason, though, even though we were kind of hoping like uh, it seems like leader ST, this should map to, to one of these, right? But if I do this, leader ST, notice what it actually shows below. Yeah. It actually kind of like, I guess, like interpolates. I don't know what the right thing. It changes leader from leader to the actual value that I have for my leader, which is comma. And yes, chat, I use space as a leader for a lot of other things. I just used leader from a long time ago. So just relax, okay? Because um, I know there's going to be a lot of people in the chat mad. So, um. 
So instead, we could do something like this for right now, and I'll show how we can actually calculate what this is uh, later. Uh, but now if we search with this, comma st, right, which is what it actually looks like as sort of the internal representation, we should hopefully get dun da da dun the information about the mapping that we had set uh, that we had set originally, right? So now we sort of see we have a right hand side, we know what we can map, all this other stuff, right? So now we've found we've found the corresponding mapping uh, for our mapping that we'd like to override. Right, so that's good. That's step one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now what we need to do, right, is we're gonna basically, uh, oh well. Yeah. Uh, let's. I'm gonna change both of these to commas for right now because we'll come back to actually fixing this to figure out leader later. That's sort of a more complicated uh, question task. Now what we can do is we could say um, local existing maps, and we'll make our own little table. And we want to find all of the maps that are currently existing, right? Okay. So how do we iterate over a mappings table? With over a mappings table, like to find, like with yeah. the find mapping or with an actual uh, the, With these mappings, which looks like this, like how do we get, so we need to loop over these, right? By doing oh, I pairs right. or pairs. That's the main question for this kind of table. For that kind of table, it would be with pairs. Wonderful. Bash, you're right. killing it already. Yep. Left-hand side, right-hand side, right? In pairs, mappings like this. Whoops. Do and, right? So now we could say um, here and let's do left-hand side. And let's say searching. Uh, now let's say something like searching for left-hand side. And then we'll see if this gives us any useful information right now right so we run this and it says mm -hmm. searching for comma sz it didn't find anything that makes sense searching for comma st it did find something so that's exactly what we're hoping to see right that's exactly what we're hoping to see in this scenario is basically that we can mm -hmm. we didn't find anything for this one and we did find something for this one so that's really good um the does the general sort of like iteration of basically using neovim as its own REPL kind of makes sense do you see what how i'm doing that is there any anything that i should explain more about what's going on there um i think i think it makes sense i think yeah. you explained it quite well as well of just like the difference between i pairs and pairs cool yeah how you're able to iterate over that i think um uh yeah, no, I I think I'm, I'm following. Cool, sweet. Yeah. Um. All right, sweet. So now we've found these mappings. So this basically means uh, local existing, right? Something like this. We'll save this as a new variable. And now we can do if existing, then we're going to do something with this existing value. Now, something sort of tricky uh, that people don't always expect for Lua is which things are... Um, what things are truthy versus what things are falsy. So in Ooh. Lua, the only things that are falsy are false and nil. Okay. So false obviously is falsy and nil is falsy, but like uh, zero is truthy. An empty table is truthy. Um, an empty string is truthy. Uh, so the rule is very, very simple, but it's a little bit, confusing if your like main other like scripting language that you write is like python okay right because like in python like it's like falsy uh is like an empty list you're like if not my list then do something and that that works for if the list is empty but that's not how lua lua works so that's just a general note as you're writing your plugins like if you did something like um like local count is zero then you do something and you're looking for the like increment the count and then you do if not mm. count then this this mm. will never work <laughs> because county is not false or nil okay does that okay. make sense so yeah. it's just something as you're like writing lua that's definitely kind of like an edge case that people forget um in this case we're safe because we always only return a table here or uh, if at the end, if you don't return anything, that's the same thing as return nil. Those are the 
Those are the same, like, same things, okay? So, uh, yeah, TC, it's a good point. Lua is great as long as you come in with an unsullied mind. Yeah, Lua has a lot of rules that are different from other programming languages, but it's pretty consistent internally, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like, like, the rule is simple, right, for what things are truthy or falsy. Uh, only false and nil. <laughs> The rule's simple, uh, but that's just not what you're used to. Like if you write C, zero is false. Like they're actually just the same thing, which is, that's that's weird. And Lua gets blamed, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. So now basically um, we've got though, uh, we've got this existing mapping. And what we can do is uh, you'll want to do table.insert existing maps existing. So table is sort of like a global that has some different table operations on it. The most common one that you'll be doing is just table.insert. First parameter is a, a table, right? And then the next thing is a value that you want to put in, right? So uh, Lua tables can contain anything inside of them, right? It's not like... Um, it's not like uh, in Rust, like for example. A type. Right, yeah. It's not like it can only be a list of one type. Like you can put yeah. anything you want inside of the, the Lua tables, right? Uh, in this case, we are putting in tables into the tables, right? Um, so now once we've done this, I, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's make sure that I put the mappings that we expect. They are inside of existing maps, right? So I run this again. And sure enough, we will notice we have sort of a table. And inside of here is one, the, the first entry is just a table that has the information about uh, our comma ST operation. Good. 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 <laughs> so now though, now though the problem is we need to basically like save this information between push and pop. So how would you... Like, wh like, what are you thinking? Like, what's the next step of ways that we could sort of, like, save information in between these uh, executions? Well, could we have a, a stack that's, like, in our, um, like, I keep calling it a cache, but, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, right? Yeah, right, in the require, Sorry. basically inside the require thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we could just do m dot underscore stack. I'm going to put underscore to sort of represent, like, hey, please don't touch this. <laughs> In general, okay. that's the that's the soft agreement between like plugin authors and everything is like, hey, um, if there's an underscore there, I'm allowing you to uh, use this perhaps and whatever, but I reserve the right to break this anytime I feel like it, <laughs> right? So it's kind of like uh, we're we're just uh, we're saying that it's like a private member of our module, right? So okay. we could just make stack be a table. Right, because we're just going to save off this information uh, into some okay. table. So what I would say, right, is we have this name, and I uh, I cheated already because I, I I knew that I wanted to basically namespace these things that we're going to push and pop to our stack of of things. Although now that I'm thinking about it, oh no, we do need a name because we need to know what we want to pop later. Or do oh, we? Yeah, yeah. Or do uh, we? Should it just be one global stack? Which way do you? Which way is more interesting uh, to implement for you, Bash? Which one do you want to do? I think we could make it work either way. I am. I'm. I'm kind of indifferent to be honest. Okay, let's keep the yeah. name then, because uh, I like getting to write like debug mode here, because it kind of, it, at least as a user, it feels it feels good. It feels good to do yeah, it this way. Then, yeah, I think it'll give you more more options. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. The only weird thing yeah. is if you did something like like push debug, right? And they did push other thing. And then you did pop debug and pop other. I think this behavior is just undefined. Uh, it could work if these don't have clashing uh, mappings. Right, then it'll mm. work just fine. But it would be weird because we'll try and like unmap the things that we did here, but then so this behavior we'll just we'll just leave as that's potentially kind of undefined. Uh, but mm. that's okay. It it might generally work just because it's unlikely that you uh clash in the in the two two areas. Okay, cool. So yeah. so we've got 
this list of mappings uh, that existed from before we were pushing onto the stack. So now we need to basically save those. So what I would do is I would say m.stack and we could say name. So this is how we can access something at this name, right? Equals existing maps. Okay, so now we've basically saved this for between uh, executions, right? So when we require this, we'll make one table. This table, like you said, is cached in between other requests. And so now we'll have this uh, information sitting around. In fact, if we do this and we do Lua require stack map, and then we say uh, p require stack map, we can look at this. Oh, do I have it not showing uh, underscore things? Here, let's try uh, dot stack. Did I do something wrong here? Oh, I didn't save this file yet. Sorry. <laughs> That's why. So let's do this. So we can even see now, right, that if we just like look at this table, we can see what the current stack is. So that's pretty cool. We have access to like seeing what's inside of the stack uh, at this time. So we're like, oh yeah, sure. I ran this code that pushes debug mode and it's got this stack right here of things uh, there. This is the only one that we're going to have to like unmap once we're done. Okay. Good? Yeah. Cool. Um, now though, we need to actually do, <laughs> we need to actually do the mappings, right? Yeah. So we can just do the same thing that we were doing before, left hand, right side in pairs mappings, just like we were iterating over before. And then we and can then just say, dot, email, dot set. nice mash, left hand side, right hand side. Now yes. we'll probably want to leave ourselves as to do, need some way to pass options in here. Uh, because maybe you want it to be silent or maybe we want it to be an expression or et cetera, all those kind of things. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll work on that as sort of like a future, a future plan. Let's see if we can get the very first mode uh, working first. Um, for people wondering about sub sounds, we have the sub sound uh, when we're not doing guest mode because today we have bash on as a guest and we don't want sounds to play over when bash talks. Okay, chat. Nice try. I mean, on. If it's a doggo sub music, I think it is better <laughs> than hearing me talk, to be honest. I, I think it's just the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not specifically doggo sub music. It's just because it plays when the <laughs> when the dog comes on. I don't think there's anything specifically oh. dog about it. So. Okay, then I'm not interested in hearing it. Yeah. Oh, this is. I'm the, not interested. <laughs> I haven't updated that guest in forever. Command edit guest, bash bunny at bash bunny. At me. There we go. Okay, so we, we've now set these mappings. So we can try, um, we can try like exiting out. We'll run this, right? Require stat Mac. It's going to put push this on here. So now when I do leader S, what I'm hoping to see are two new mappings here, right? And uh, I didn't save this file again because I'm silly. <laughs> uh, and we're going to do that. Right hand side, oh, expected oh. string or function got nil. Um, for unfair uh, mappings, vim dot set. Oh, we didn't set the mode. We didn't set the mode. We got to pass oh. mode here. This would have this wouldn't have happened if I had taken the time to read the documentation, right? <laughs> the Nucky Man set mode left hand side, right hand side ops. Uh, this is a must right. do though. Seriously, if you're writing your own plugin, the documentation for NeoVim that's built in is really really helpful. So take the time to explore it or use like telescope help tags right because you can just search for like key map set and you can find different options all that kind of good stuff um that's that's like how i people think that i like have some magical knowledge of neovim but my magical knowledge of neovim is literally just when i have a question i read the docs that's my magical knowledge. <laughs> that is magical. Yeah, I it is. Relate. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> what are docs? Yeah. What? What are docs? Well, that was like <laughs> we were helping Melky with something recently, and Melky and we were like, they they were asking Melky, do you want to know how it works, or do you just want it to work? <laughs> and he was like, I just Very want it to different. work right now. Yes. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> so so, anyways. Um, 
if you're writing a plugin, I do think though, it is good to know how it works. And the more you can do that, the better you'll understand over time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm, I'm too good at breaking things to like not understand how they work. You know, I break <laughs> yeah, exactly. things way too much in, right. to like not have mm -hmm. to make the effort to know how it works so that mm -hmm. I can fix it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, then for the... Yep. OPTS, is that like optionals or is ah. that like a, should we add buffers equal to zero? Yes. Uh, so we, um, so we don't need to put it um, because right now we're not going to do anything with it. So if we added buffer like equals zero or buffer equals true, then that would only map it for the current buffer that we're in, which that is probably something we need to do separately. What we probably need to do is add like a push buffer function or something like that later to handle um it basically handle whether we're going to map something like every time we go into a new buffer we sort of need to sketch out how that would work for ourselves um for now we're just going to do global ones so the options yeah. are in this case optional you don't have to pass them um, they could do things like turn it to silent or say what buffer it's going to be or whether this returns a string that should be executed. There's a bunch of different um, kinds of options that we can pass, but we don't need any of them in our very first our very first one. Um, so now, hopefully, though, if we do this and we require this and we do and map this, we'll see, hey, here's our two mappings that we wanted to have. Very cool. That's really exciting. Ooh, that is exciting. Um, yeah, this is this is a plugin already. <laughs> you know, this is a plugin. It does mappings for you. Um, not very exciting plugin yet because it doesn't do a lot more than <laughs> like calling uh, that you that you want to add these maps, which is not super hard to do without this. But that's a start, right? <laughs> so now we've got two options. We got two options, Bash. I can okay. show you how we can use a, a testing framework for NeoVim so that we could start writing sort of like um, just some expectation kind of tests. Like you'll run some code and then we can mm -hmm. ask like, okay, do we have these mappings right now? Or we can do the pop part. So I'm kind of leaning towards doing tests, but it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, the tests would be cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. Apparently Chad test, agrees. Test. <laughs> they're they're, yes. they're ready to see tests. Okay. Yeah, so, tests are good. Um, what we can do is I've, I've got some stuff actually already set up to help, uh, to, to make this a bit, uh, easier inside of some plugins that I, that I've already done. And we're going to use a test wow. framework that, um, is written in plenary, which is a real word. Prime didn't believe that it was a real word for a long plenary. time. He thought I just literally made it up. It just means... Uh, full, complete, entire, absolute, unqualified. This is the definition of plenary because it was, uh, I just wrote this because I was tired of writing the same utilities in every single plugin. So this is kind of like a Lua plugin library, right? Is basically um, what it is. And I wanted to pick a unique name uh, so that people could import and it didn't have namespace clashes. But Prime was just saying plenary for six months and then eventually yeah, they speak of planets yeah well yeah, it does kind of sound like <laughs> it does kind of sound like planets as well and then i was like prime you know that's a real word right and then he was like no you're lying to me so then he looked it up on stream <laughs> and he was like oh okay i see that you're not lying to me um so i will uh, paste this link in the chat but we've got a wonderful wonderful testing guide a lot of it's written by the wonderful connie um, wow, Connie always coming in clutch. Connie right? really does, really does. <laughs> Created telescope, um, <laughs> but Connie has done a lot of stuff. So this yeah. lets us write some cool tests that just look like this. We can describe, we write some name of the test that we want to do, and then we have a function, and we can have multiple. Um, they're just called like it. Each one is it. It looks very similar to like just if you've done that or other things like that. And we we can run these, and we can just run them oh. inside of. Uh, inside of NeoVim. And what is really quite crazy is these will, this file gets executed by a separate NeoVim instance. So each Ooh. time it's completely new state basically, right? So it, yeah. you can like mess with whatever you want and do anything you want and they'll always get executed in different NeoVim instances. Um, and it communicates over RPC with each other and a bunch of cool stuff like that. So, wow. um, so if you have plenary installed, right? If you have plenary installed, all you have to do the telescope. What? 
You have it. It's a requirement for telescope. Right? Exactly. So obviously everyone yeah. already has it installed because <laughs> yeah. we know everyone's using telescope, of course. Right. Yeah, of course. Um, so all we have to do now is uh, I like to put these in like a, in just a separate in a separate folder. Usually um, you can put it either in like Lua slash tests or you can put it. I usually just put it in a new folder tests. And so we can do like Wait. tests. Oh, go ahead. Did you just have a question? Wait, can you can you make can, did you just make a folder? Yeah, of course. So if you do oh. bang right here, you can just run any uh, command. Wow. This is just the command line. Wow. So anything I, that I actually didn't know that. Yeah, anything that, that you that can blew my mind. anything that you can run from the command line, you can just run from right here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Pretty Thank cool. You so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah uh so we could just do sudo rm dash no <laughs> we're i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna type it just in case you never know that's too dangerous chat <laughs> um so yes yeah, so this is how i usually make uh i just make like i can make dir so i just made tests right so then now i can I do that it saves me so much time <laughs> why we... am i like this i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh geez. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. Uh, cool pro tip is you can do little known tip, by the way, uh, bang, and then you can just run uh, commands. So that's really cool. So uh, yeah. So now we can do tests and I'll, let's just call it uh, map stack. And it needs to, if you're going to use the framework thing that we have for planner, it, it, the file has to end with underscore spec. That's how it like okay. finds the files that it's going to run. Okay. Uh, and so now we can just write something like describe um, map stack function, right? Uh, and let's just say it uh, can be required. This is a dumb this is a dumb test, but this will just show that we can do require map stack, right? Uh, I'll write it like this. So nothing nothing too crazy going on there. I have mapped to my uh, leader T this mapping here plug plenary test file. This just says, hey, can you run the test file that I'm currently in? So this is a mapping defined by plenary. So if you map this in your config, it should just work if you're inside of an underscore spec file. So if I do leader T, dun, 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 it says, oh, map stack is not a thing because I think I called it stack map, didn't I? Wait, which way did I call it? Stack, stack. I called it stack yeah. map. Okay, cool. So that showed you how a test failed. <laughs> and now I can do leader T and now it worked. There we go. Uh, magical. So Whoa. it. So this uh, ran this in a separate uh, NeoVim instance, right? So this is in a completely different NeoVim. So like the fact that we just ran this, it didn't actually affect the mappings of the current NeoVim that I'm in. Cool? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's um, pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, okay, so now though, we can write more tests. So we can do something like this. Let's do, can uh, push, can push uh, a single mapping, right? And let's just do something like this. We'll say require stack map, uh, stack map, dot push and then we could say something like test one require yeah um oh did i wait where, where do we put mode we did here and then we can just put in some yes good call uh we can just put something here so let's just say something like asdf asdf because that's not a mapping that i have and we can just do the classic like echo this is a test okay right okay. so now hopefully Hopefully, what we can do is after this, we should be able to do something like local maps is um, vim.api.envim git key map normal mode. And what's really interesting, right, is because this is just getting executed inside of another NeoVim instance. You can just use all of the APIs that you are used to using, right? So, like, if you want to grab all the key maps, you can just grab all the key maps, right? We can do the same uh, thing that we did last time, which is we can say something like uh, for map in iPairs maps do end. And what we're hoping to find 
is uh actually let's just make ourselves a little helper function local uh find map uh maps i don't know left hand side this is going to be exactly the same as we had in the other place but that's okay it doesn't super matter um if map dot lhs equals lhs then return map end okay right so what we yeah. want to do is we just want to say okay uh local found is find map maps uh asdf asdf right and hopefully this should be something so what we can do is we can say assert dot r dot same uh this is built in and you can read about this in this testing guide assert dot r dot same uh probably somewhere in here there's like this whole lua cert library that is just available to you that you can use which is really cool um and so we can just say let's just say that it should be a, an empty table which is not what we expect right we want it to actually be something when we run this mm. file it'll say hey you passed in this table that doesn't look like an empty table so our test mm. failed which is good that's what we wanted to have happen right mm -hmm. um so instead what we could do is we could just say something like echo this is a test found dot right hand side because that's what we expect to see right is that uh we want this whole thing to equal whatever this mapping is. That will sort of associate whatever is going on with this mapping to be here. And in fact, we could say local RHS equals, just so that it's more obvious what's happening. And we can say this right here. Does that make sense? You following me there? I am doing my best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what we're trying to assert in this case is, okay, we're gonna push a new mapping. It's going to be under the namespace test one. It's going to be normal mode. And what we want to do is we want to map ASDF, ASDF to this right hand side. This right hand side is this string. Mm -hmm. So after we've done that, I want to assert that this actually does something. Right. Okay. Um, and so to do that, we're going to say, okay, let's uh, look at all the mappings. Let's mm -hmm. see if we have one that's ASDF, ASDF. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what I want to make sure is that the mapping that has ASDF, ASDF is actually this right hand side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so sense. now when we run this, we should pass because this actually worked and we could make this fail, for example, by, um, instead of just mapping like the right hand side, we could say, um, this will break things. Okay. Right. So if we mm -hmm. just like concatenated this string to the other side, went back to here, it'll say, uh, Hey, what you were expecting was this, <laughs> but you got, this will break things, which would be unexpected. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, undo that here so that we don't have that anymore. So now when we're in our tests, we're here. So that's the first part. So we could write more tests on this, right? We could add multiple different things. We could add them to different modes. It's as simple as just mm -hmm. literally writing another it can push mm -hmm. multiple mappings, right? So we'll just do ex almost exactly the same thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just say maybe this should be um, ASDF1. and like two or something like that, right? So we should right. be able to hopefully find ASDF one. And then we could just do exactly the same thing here. Um, found one and found two, something like this. Mm -hmm. And we can just increment both of these numbers. Oops, uh, like this. One, 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 two, 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 okay. So I don't even know if I did all of these at the same time, but I think it's pretty close. Yes. Okay, sweet. So now we've just asserted, all right, it works for one map in, works for multiple, by induction, it works for infinity. Uh, that's how math nice. works, I'm pretty sure, right? So that seems good. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> There's a few <laughs> steps in between maybe, but I think generally that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much where we're at. <laughs> sweet. So when once you like have this loop going i find it feels really really good right so you're able to like iterate on some of the basic stuff by just executing the file then once mm -hmm. you start doing some more like complicated stuff you can move into like setting up this whole setting up this whole thing that basically like will run tests for you and i have one keystroke that just like runs all the tests okay sweet that's good we can move on mm -hmm. right so that sort of like combo there feels really uh fast 
for me and feels yeah. really nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. This is really cool. Yeah. So once we've got this, now it's like, okay, well, what would be awesome would be as if we could pop something off of here, <laughs> right? And yeah. we remove this mapping because uh, that yeah. would be pretty sweet. So let's try. <laughs> Um, and we'll probably find that we need to um, add a little bit more information, I think. So we'll we'll see. But so what we want to do now, right, is we want to pop the uh, pop the mappings off of that off of the stack. So yeah. give me give me a general outline what you're thinking. You don't, don't have to say the code, but just tell me sort of the steps that are going on in your head that you're thinking about or questions you might have about the next step. Uh, okay, so this is kind of the, the high level idea of what I think we need to do is that basically we need to grab, uh, get our, like, I keep calling it like the global cache. Perfect. Basically. Like, yeah, you can just call it like uh, the packages or something like that. Yeah, the packages. Okay, yeah. So get all the packages. And yeah. then from there, it'll have our stack. That's like where our stack, uh, all the information for our stack is held. Yep. Mm -hmm. So from there, we can basically just um, remap the if it basically if that if the current uh key map has something in the stack mm -hmm. then assign the right like assign the right hand side that is defined in the stack to the that key bind yep. and then if not then it can just be like assigned to nil mm -hmm. and then uh yeah and then you can probably and then just remove that from the stack sweet okay yeah i think that sounds good i think that's basically exactly what we uh what we need to do uh, so the first thing, like you said, right, let's grab from our stack so we can say local. This is basically like existing, right, is m stack name, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can just clear m stack name equals nil now, right? So we're just basically removing that from our stack um, from before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now we need to basically go through and unmap each of these. And um, I'm noticing the one other thing that we don't have, which um, is important is we never kept track of all of the mappings that we made initially. So we only kept track of the ones that were already existing. We didn't actually keep track of mappings. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think what we could do instead is we can just push onto our stack existing, and then we can pu push mappings like this. So now we've got a table that's got these two keys. Okay, does that make sense? Wait, where is that? Is that so this is what we're gonna push we're gonna push onto the stack basically um like when we initialize it uh yes so when we create our new entry in the stack so when we call uh push right we're mm -hmm. gonna keep track of which things were existing at the time of creating this map as well as well we're also gonna keep track of uh whatever mappings we created uh, because we need to know which mappings those are so that we can drop those yeah <laughs> right yeah. so we we otherwise we would just we just accidentally leave those around which we definitely don't want to do so okay. now we've got these two tables that's uh that's important that's important right so we could just say um we could call this like state or something like that instead right so now state has existing and state has mappings okay um, yeah Yes. Okay. So that's, that's good. That's, that's where we're at right now. So then what we could do is like you said, we're going to have to iterate over all of the mappings. So that's why we needed this mappings. So we could do something right. Like for left-hand side, right-hand side in pairs, uh, state dot mappings do end. right. So now, okay, so we've got our left-hand side. We've got our right-hand side. One thing that I was noticing that's kind of annoying that I didn't think about before was maybe instead of treating existing like it's an array, mm -hmm. this existing maps, mm -hmm. maybe we could do existing maps left-hand side equals existing so that we can uh, just check if this left-hand side exists instead of putting it into a table and like searching over the table every time. Kind of like when you put an element either into a set or yeah. like into a dictionary versus a list like in python right this yeah. way we are putting it more into like a dictionary and the key is the left hand side because those are unique uh so gotcha. we could just yeah, yeah, yeah. not do that part right now we've got existing maps up to this point we hadn't used anything with them so that seems nice um okay so so we should be able to do something like this if 
um, state dot existing left hand side then uh, else end right so this is basically like handle mappings mm -hmm. that existed mm -hmm. handle mappings that didn't exist right those are two cases that we need that we need to uh, that we need to do now okay um yeah 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 okay so let's just let's just handle this case first because this case is simpler um we're looking to key map and delete something and sure enough there's nvim key map del which is just the opposite of nvap nvim key map set so that's really nice we can just use um <clears throat> the reverse like of set so that's nice because um i'm gonna say mode as well here because mm -hmm. we're gonna need mode we can just do vim dot key map dot del we're gonna need to do state dot mode and then left hand side right hand side so this should <clears throat> if i remembered everything correctly this should basically just straight up delete any of the mappings that didn't exist before and now we can try and test this right so let's go over to our test okay and let's try and write one it can delete mappings uh, after pop and we can basically just copy very similar to what we did for this one right where we push these now what we want to do is we want to pop them and we should just be able to say pop one what would you want to check after we run this what's the state that you expect things to be after this well so you could check that the um you can look for the based on the key yep so based on the name see if that's nil awesome the value yep exactly so what we can do now is we can get the maps again and now that i see there we'll just do this every single time let's just delete maps from this function and say local maps is vim.api.nvim get key map here uh, for normal mode because we're just always doing normal mode right now and we'll mm -hmm. just uh delete these right so we can just we can just do this every time and delete this and yeah we'll delete this one as well and then so we can do a local f uh after pop oops <laughs> classic and now we just want to say okay there shouldn't be anything here right because what we expect to have happen afterward after we've deleted everything is that there is no mapping for asdf asdf right because that wasn't a mapping mm -hmm. that existed to start with so um when we run this we get a fail dang why did we get a fail expected nil um d d d d d d d d d d test one normal test one stack map pop okay let's uh let's go back to here uh we did save everything state dot mode left hand side right hand side state dot mappings interesting what does our stack look like before we do that so Here's a little thing that I do when I'm I'm confused here. A nice thing you can try. So you can just do assert r dot same. Do something that you know is going to be false, like mm -hmm. require stack map um, dot stack. Mm -hmm. I I know that the table should not be empty at this point. So what I want to see is what does it actually look like. What does the stack that we're sort of keeping track of everything in? What does that actually mm -hmm. look like at this time? And so now I can see. Okay, we've got test one. And it should be existing. Um, okay, so we do have test one. That's good. We wanted to have, or we want ASDF, ASDF. Oh. Okay, I think I see the. I think I see one of the problems here. The problem is that we've um, <clears throat> these don't get cleared in between every execution, uh, because each it gets executed within the same neo of him, uh, but like each file is a separate NeoVim instance. So we need to find some way to basically clear um, our stack map. Fortunately, oh. we've got um, this thing called before each. This is built into the testing framework as well. This runs before um, every single test. Yeah. Um, so let's, set up. yeah, exactly. Okay. So 
Yep. Yeah, yeah. So let's just do something like vim.keymap.dell um, normal mode. Left hand side is ASDF, ASDF. So we always clear ASDF, ASDF when we start. And mm -hmm. let's also do uh, require stack map dot stack equals just an empty table. Um, okay. In fact, maybe what would be better is we should uh, we should just do a like something like m dot clear here, mm -hmm. right? And this just sets m dot stack equals to this for now. Maybe it'll have to do other things. Mm -hmm. um, but we can okay, we can just call clear here. So other people shouldn't call this, but it's nice for us to make sure that we've got like sort of this clean slate every single time. So hopefully, yeah. uh, unexpected error, no such mapping, B to B to B to B. No such mapping, no such. Uh oh, okay, let me see here. Bim. Oh, only if this exists. Oh, that's a, oh, okay. So this is erring because this doesn't exist. This is a good thing for you to know generally. In Lua, Lua doesn't have a concept of something like try, do stuff, and then catch. except like this, right? And then yeah. something, or like try, catch, or whatever. Instead, what it has is a function called p call, which just means protected call, I think. Um, at least that's what I always think of <laughs> when yeah. I'm writing it. Um, and what you do is you pass some function in the first argument, and then you pass the list of arguments to the rest. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't care whether it succeeds or not, like in this case, I don't actually care um, if ASDF, ASDF doesn't exist or not, mm -hmm. right? Like I can just discard this, but in general it returns okay. And then basically the ret value here, if mm -hmm. uh, okay is true, then it means this function call succeeded. If it's mm -hmm. false, then the error message is passed in the second value. So if it succeeds, so if this is um, okay, then mm -hmm. this is whatever this function would normally return. If it errors, okay will be false. And this ret will be uh, whatever message uh, was causing the error. In this case, okay. we don't actually care if it errors or not. We're just basically saying, um, please don't have this mapping when we start. <laughs> right? <laughs> we just don't want this in between executions. That's all we're saying, yeah. basically, in that case. So, yeah. Cool. So this still failed. That's all right, though. Oh, duh. Of course it failed. We we left in the... <laughs> I forgot that we left in the thing that forces it to fail. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Remove the thing that forces I, it to fail. Actually, Rocker, if you... Uh, d there's a really sweet uh, plugin that adds uh, plugins. Lua... There's, there's some, like, Lua docs docs vim doc lua vim docs this plugin right here uh and i think it's these two docs these two together that add a bunch of uh lua help stuff into neovim's help which is really cool so if i do help p call it'll actually show me the information from p call this is originally from the lua 5.1 guide but someone oh. transformed it into a way that you can put it inside of here so you can uh have really nice help stuff inside of uh neovim yeah hashtag there's a neovim plugin for that indeed <laughs> um okay so now ops expected table got string d d d d d d okay so we need to go to uh that's not the one i meant to do Ooh, that came up 109 so this is nice because it said so one thing to do as well is to learn how to read the stack trace trace back for lua so what we mm -hmm. see is that in here in this function pop on line 61, we are not passing uh, the right stuff to Dell. So let's hop back over to our thing here. We go to line 61. Mm. Oh, we don't have to pass a right-hand side. That's not how deleting things works. You only need oh, to pass yeah, a left-hand side. <laughs> um, that is sort of how deletion works, right? Okay, so yeah. now, now hopefully when we run this, we get pass. Sweet. So yeah. we've successfully done it now for the case where we know there are no existing mappings. Yeah. Right. So I would say um, no existing. Let's basically just copy this uh, function here and then say instead of no existing, let's just change this to yes existing. Um, and so what I would I do. Know. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> it makes it obvious for me what's happening. Right. Uh, so now the only difference in this one should be that we can do vim.keymap 
dot set normal mode right mm -hmm. um asdf asdf obviously it's the best mapping and we can say mm -hmm. um echo og yeah. mapping you know something like this oh, yeah. so that we know that this is the original mapping yeah um i like it so now this is gonna fail for a variety of reasons uh, mm -hmm. But primarily because we know for sure that this doesn't do anything because this is basically error not yet implemented, <laughs> right? Um, we we have not done we have not done the actual work for this section yet. So if we go to here and we run this test, we're gonna see something that it says, "Hey, sure enough, not yet implemented. <laughs> nice. We haven't done that yet. Um, so let's try and implement. Also, this." Uh, this test isn't right. We can just write what the correct condition should be, which is that mm -hmm. it should be saying echo OG mapping here, right? And this should be mm -hmm. um, after pop dot RHS, All right? So what we expect to see yeah. is that this pushes onto it, echo, this is a test, it finds mm -hmm. it, right? And then after we pop that off, we should still have OG mapping now, right? That's like the whole point of our plugin. <laughs> yeah. Um, eventually, right? Uh, and so obviously right now it's still gonna say not yet implemented because we haven't implemented this. So. Yeah. So then, okay. Yeah, so then if it's existing, yep. then what we would basically wanna do is uh, we wanna get the plugin table, uh, right? The, the like the cache ah yeah okay yeah yeah right so we actually already have that that's right here so this is this is that original mapping so we could say like local og mapping is this right so this is the og mapping oh, okay, table okay. that existed yeah. yep and then what do we need to do okay so then basically okay so if that exists uh we want to assign the right hand side of that yeah uh, from the original one assign that now to the left hand side yeah. So do, do we need to like set the existing one to nil first or we can just reset? We can just like set set a new value to it, right? Um, yeah, we don't even have to put anything in this existing because we're just discarding this whole table once we're done. So we don't have to clean up okay. at all. We've already uh, dropped it from the stack, right? And since Lewis oh, garbage right. collected okay. and everything, we will just be, this table will just be disappearing into the ether since there's no more references uh, to the table anymore. So just right, like you're saying, right, right. we can just do the right-hand side. Now there's yep. a little bit more work that needs to be done here to do. Handle the options from the table. For example, if it's an expression mapping or if it's silent or other kinds of like options that you can attach to a mapping, we still need mm -hmm. to do that. But first, let's just try and see if we can get it to, to do the right thing here, right? Mm -hmm. So if we go back to our test, boom right. bash good call that's awesome yeah so now this now this does the very basic version of what we wanted and what's cool is we even have tests that sort of like are validating that it actually like works for real yeah right that's awesome um so that's the that's the main stuff um so now we'll just do quickly how you could write some vim docs for this um mm -hmm. just really short it we can do maybe next month maybe we'll implement the like second set of features for this uh pr which yeah. would be like buffer mapping and we can make it so that it automatically generates the documentation in ci and we can automatically run the tests in ci and we can add some of those sort of like other features that really um surprise people that it's possible to do with neovim plugins <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right yeah, like oh cool. what do you mean i can run tests in ci like yeah we uh we've done that we figured out some of that that stuff to make that work really nice so so let's write just like the most basic bare bones doc let's write a readme and then we'll just push and then we have made our first neovim plugin yeah yeah cool. so that sounds awesome um basically i'll show you an example of uh of like telescope so telescope in a doc folder so we have to do and once again chat you can use bang here to run a command doc Why? um in a doc folder you pretty much just have to put something in here with a name and dot txt All right so we can do doc uh stack map dot txt okay and we can look at telescopes uh as an example and uh well telescopes is okay it's fine uh 
basically there's a couple things that you need to do you need this magic little thing at the bottom which tells uh vim that this is a help file this is called a mode line by the way help mode line and it's just a way for vim to know that things are a certain file type and other stuff like that um so you can just put this here and then if you uh edit this notice how now my file type is help right down here uh because this says ft equals help if i change this to like ft equals lua and i edited this again it would think now it's a lua file oh so anyways there's uh there's that okay so in general the way that people make this work is um i usually put a nice little a bunch of equal signs in a row Mm -hmm. Mode lines are a good way to compromise your system. Yes, Kathy, you're true about that. Don't use them generally, but they're good for help files. <laughs> uh, they can't execute anything in this case. So, um, and the way that you get something like this telescope.envim so that you can type help telescope.envim, right? Right. You need something of a specific format. The format's really simple. You just put a star and then you say something like stack map dot envim and a star notice how mine turns to green now after we do that yeah. and then you can just type right uh, i think it's just right and then it'll align it to the right Whoa. that's just a command inside of vim you can look at help right it uses Whoa. your text width to find out where that should be so our text width is 78 so it puts it aligned to the right 78 um you don't need to press space the exact number of times to line that up <laughs> <laughs> um right so then we can just do something like um this plugin helps you to set a bunch or to push a bunch of maps on some event and mm -hmm. then pop uh, them when you're done with that event. See examples, something like this, right? Below. Yeah. And then what we can do is we can just write very similar to like how Telescope has, um, let's find like a good example in here of just like a normal function, just a smaller one, uh, actions. Yeah, these were, these ones are fine. So basically, in general, the way I like to write this is you can do something like this, where you'd say um, stack map dot push, and then this would have name, mode, and uh, mappings, right? Because that's that's what we said. And then you're mm -hmm. gonna wanna make a uh, like another tag basically for this. So you can make a tag by just doing that same thing: stack map dot push, right? Yeah. Like this. And then we can type right. There we go. So now that's there looking really pretty. And then we yeah. can just write something like push the name uh, mappings for a particular mode. Um, this reminds me to do we should handle different modes separately. I don't really know. We, I, we didn't super think about how to handle like the yeah. fact that you could have a name that's like in one mode and not in another. I don't know. We, we have to think about that for us <laughs> later, right? Um, yeah. Mappings should be a key, whoops, key value pair of uh, like left-hand side equals right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Something like this. And then uh, you can write an example by putting a little bracket going this way and then a bracket going this way. They disappear when you're oh. inside of a help file. And then inside of here, it's kind of highlighted different. So you could do stack map dot push uh, example normal, um, you know, something like space, you know, ST. Yeah. Echo, wow, this got mapped. <laughs> right and then dot dot yeah. dot down here so there you go so that's so that's example of stack map dot push uh mm -hmm. we like i said we have to think about how we're going to handle different modes but that's that's our problem <laughs> not mm -hmm. not the user's problem for now so then we just the only other thing that we care about to show people is stack map dot pop mm -hmm. we can write a line this we can say stack map dot pop and this is just name maybe what we should do instead is we should put mode here this would be super easy for us to implement. And maybe we should do this really quick where I just think of this mode. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we do like stat Mac like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. This is super easy to add, right? And we just do this. And then we say, instead of putting mode here, we put mode here. We'll just need to basically um, equals. This is a really common trick that you might do. Because only nil or false are uh, falsy, mm -hmm. right? 
if even if this is an empty table, it will return this table first and short circuit and not execute the rest of this. So this basically mm -hmm. drops in a table by default if this name has never been made before. Um, mm -hmm. To do next time show bash about meta tables pog slide okay next time yeah. we'll show you meta tables this is another like nice little lua ism it's very similar to like python double underscore methods and stuff okay. like that um you know where you could do like double underscore stir and it changed how like string gets displayed and stuff like that we can basically make this like table always return a table instead of nil so that okay. when you access it, you don't have to remember to do this. You can always just access it like this way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is, it's yeah. just a, it, it makes it easier to use and do some other stuff like that. And say yes to meta tables, Rocker. Nice try. <laughs> um, so now we do this, this, this. Um, state, state.mode. We have the mode and we have the mode here. So I'll just clean those up just to make sure state mode, 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 name, mode, beep, 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 beep. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, and we don't actually need the right hand side because we're not going to use that. We can go over to our test and run this. This is going to say, hey, this doesn't work. You didn't pass mode to these, right? For our pop ones here, we now have to say yeah. normal and I think normal, normal here, area. right? And all our tests pass again. Wonderful. Nice. So we can now Beautiful. go back to our doc file and then we can say mode. This is good here. So now we can delete that. Um, pop the name mappings i noticed that i said mappings <laughs> okay mappings um uh restores original mappings uh from before calling stack uh stack map dot push so one thing that's really cool is Ooh. uh when you use these little these little pipes here and you put something mm -hmm. inside of here now if you're inside of here and you press capital k um or it should be that Oh, because I'm in I'm in some weird file that is oh I know why that is. Okay. Uh if we do this after closing and opening again, because I didn't do this. I think this will probably work, but uh Oh. I gotta do this. Sorry. Doc? I don't know. Do I have to do this? There we go, sweet. So now if you were like oh. looking at this, it'll open up. So when you're browsing around in the help if you went sta help stack map dot push you'll go to here and if you were mm -hmm. on like pop inside of here and i press capital k it'll take me to here so like the help docs already nice. do all of that for you so as long as you just write them with a few little things like putting star around a tag like this mm -hmm. um did i never um oh i think i just uh Oh, I accidentally deleted a line there. There we go. Okay. Um, as long as you put around that information, then it'll just magically work. Like your plugin manager will build the tags for you and all of that stuff. So people will be able to just do help stack map dot push and help stack map dot pop. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now we just need to do, oh, I guess we need to edit the readme and say stacks of maps. Um, documentation. C. Help stack map dot anvim i think right did we say help stack map yeah yes nice not stat map uh a plugin for easily adding and then removing sets of mappings without uh losing what maps you had before something like that that's awesome and then there we go now we're done